All right, today we're covering 5-1, which is perpendicular and angle bisectors. Remember to take notes and to complete the check it out problems. We have two learning targets today. The first one is I can prove and apply theorems about perpendicular bisectors. So we're looking at segments. And I can prove and apply theorems about angle bisectors, so angles. We have a few definitions we need to talk about before we get to the theorems. The first one says when a point is the same distance from two or more objects, the point is said to be equidistant from the objects. So it mean, that means it's just equal distance or the same di distance from those two objects. The second, it's a little bit strange wording, but it says a perpendicular bisector of a segment can be defined as a set of points in a plane that are equidistant from the endpoints of the plane. So if I were to draw a line segment and the perpendicular bisector. What it means is that any point on this line here is going to be the same distance from A as it is from B. So per this point here is going to be the same distance from here to here. If I pick this point here, it, it's going to be the same distance from this point to A as it is to B. So we have two theorems. The first is perpendicular bisector theorem. And it states if a point is on a perpendicular bisector of a segment, this is our perpendicular bisector, then it is equal distance from the endpoints of the segment. Ms. Briscoe just discussed that. And so our conclusion is that um, segment XA is equal to segment um, XB. And in the converse, so we're given um, two lines here, two segments are congruent and perpendicular bisector. So we know it's going to be that it's perpendicular bisector to the segment and that those segments down here are going to be congruent. All right, so we're going to look at a few examples using those two theorems to figure, um, to practice those concepts. So it said find each measure for number one. MN, so we want to find MN. And, and MN is actually this. So what do we know? We know that this line NP is perpendicular to ML. And we also see that these two pieces are congruent. So that tells me that NP is the perpendicular bisector to ML and that every point is equidistant from M as it is to L. So that means NM, MN has to equal 2.6 is going to be the same length as NL. All right, number two, we want to find BC. So BC is here. And what do we know? We see that the length of these are congruent and that this line is perpendicular. So since these two lines are, line segments are congruent, we know that this has to be a perpendicular bisector, meaning that DC and db are the same length since this cuts it in half, so bc is going to be 12. Last one. Oh, bc, sorry. That's bd. bd is going to be 12, and bc is going to be 12 plus 12, which is 24. Thank you, Ms. Aiken. So make sure you read the questions. <laughs> That's right. I, I do the same thing I accuse you of. Okay. <laughs> so last one is... We want to find TU, which is this, and we're told that it, it's 3x plus 9. We see that it is a perpendicular, that this is the perpendicular bisector because these two lengths are congruent and it's perpendicular. So that means that TU and UV are congruent, and we're going to set the equations equal and solve for x, and then plug that back in. We just stopped it. Oh, we're still going. <laughs> Okay, so you can see here, I set up my equation, setting the two expressions equal to each other. I solved for x, so I subtracted 3x here, and then added 17x here to get 26 6 is equal to 4x. Divide by 4, whoops, I forgot to put the 4 here, and you get x is equal to 6.5, and then I want to find the length of tu, so I'm going to plug it in.
so now it's your turn. Eventually. Here we go. You have two check outs too. Bring any questions to class? All right, and now we have two theorems having to do with angle bisectors. So remember, the distance between a point and a line is the length of the perpendicular segment. That's going to be the shortest distance. Sorry. All right, so the first one is angle bisector theorem. If a point is on the bisector of an angle, then it's equidistant from the side of the angle. So here we have a, an angle bisector. It cuts angle P here into two angle parts. side to this line is congruent to from this point to the other side and it's perpendicular, then we know that this has to be an angle bisector. So angle APC, which is this angle, has to be congruent to BPC. Okay, so let's work through these problems now using the angle bisector theorem and the converse for that. So for A, it asks us to find the length of here have to be congruent two segments, so BC is going to be 7.2, the same as CD. Now we have to find the measure of angle EFH. No. Oh, yes. Thank you. <laughs> so EFH, we find the angle measure up here. And we're given that measure of angle EFG, so this whole angle here is 50 degrees. Given we have a bisector here, we know those right angles here, these two are congruent. This angle here is 25, which makes this angle here also have to be 25. So the measure of angle EFH equals 25 degrees. All right, one more. So find MKL. So M. KL is this angle here. And what do we know? We know we have these two perpendicular lines from the sides to another line, and they're congruent. So that means that this has to be a, an angle bisector, meaning that these two angles have to be congruent. So we will set up the equation. This has to be equal to this. We'll solve for A and find the measure of that angle. Okay. So I set up my equation, I set the two expressions equal to each other, then I subtracted 2a from both sides and subtracted 20 to get a equals 6, plug that in, and I get that measure of this angle is 38, which is also the measure of this angle as well. And now you have two check it outs to do using the angle bisector theorem and the converse. Bring any questions to class? We're going to skip this one. Do they still do the check it out? Yes, but you will do this check it out. It, it is just um, looking at the theorems, what would, would you be able to conclude? Okay, so here's our last example. We want to write an equation in, in point slope form for the perpendicular bisector of the segment with endpoints C at 6, negative 5, and D's at 10, 1. Okay, so yes, there's a lot of writing here on the board, but Remember, this is our point slope form. We want to end up in this form. Our first step is to find the midpoint of segment CD. So we use our two points here, plug them in midpoint, the average of the x coordinates and the average of the y coordinates. So this is our point now, midpoint, which is going to be the point we plug in for, so we found the point. Now we have to find the slope, second step, slope of segment CD. Change in y over the change in x, so 1 minus a negative 5 over 10 minus 6 is 6 over 4, or 3 halves, but we want the perpendicular bisector, so we have to take the negative reciprocal or opposite reciprocal, so this is our slope we're going to be using for our point slope form. Plugging our values in, we get y minus 
the y coordinate of our midpoint, which is negative 2, plug in our slope of negative 2 thirds, and x minus our x coordinate for our midpoint, which is 8. Simplifying, we get y plus 2 equals negative 2 thirds times x minus 8. So write down these steps, make sure you can follow those. Good job. Oh, thanks. Now you get to try, so I hopefully you wrote down those steps. Use those steps and find the equation for the perpendicular bisector in point-slope form uh, of the line containing the two endpoints. So to summarize, uh, make sure you've got these two theorems and their converse is written down with the perpendicular bisector theorem the converse and the angle bisector theorem the converse. And then again, here are the steps for writing the equation of the perpendicular bisector of a segment when the with, when given the coordinates of the endpoints. Ooh, stumble on that one. So you have your three steps, find the midpoint of your segment, find the slope of your segment, and then take the opposite reciprocal for your perpendicular slope, and then plug in your slope, your um, midpoint, and your slope into your point-slope form. Bring any questions you have to class. Thanks. <laughs>